In true Walking Dead fashion, the ones who live episode 2 introduced lovely new characters, gave them background stories, and killed them off before the episode was over. I mean, why? Is the title The Ones Who Live mean that it will only be Rick and Michonne who will end up alive in this series? Will everyone around them die? First with my guy Okafor, whose voice just had me feeling a lot of things, and then Nat, perhaps one of the most likable characters in the Walking Dead universe. Besides his death though, I found this episode incredibly and deeply emotional. The scenes where Michonne hugged Rick's boots and then cried out loud showed her in her most vulnerable state. And of course, her reunion with Rick made me bawl my eyes out. I loved how they acted like teenagers and secretly met to make out. Anyway, in this video, I want to talk about a few questions this episode raised and did not give clear answers to. For example, why did CRM gas random civilians on a regular day or why didn't Jadis, who still has the world's worst haircut 12 years into the apocalypse, did not threaten Rick before, but did so after Michonne arrived? I'm not going to do a regular recap or breakdown since there are hundreds of other channels doing it. Let's have a little discussion about some of these questions and more instead. Let's go! The meaning of the ones who live this is now a famous phrase in the Walking Dead universe, but I wonder if it has a different meaning for this series. We first heard it in the season 5 episode 15 from Rick himself, he says it when speaking to the Alexandrian residents. From what I understood, Rick meant that he and his friends were the ones who took action and did what needed to be done. They got inspired from everyone they met along the way and continued to inspire the living. That was the only way to live in this world as opposed to making it alive. Later in Season 7, Episode 8, Michonne reminded Rick of the same phrase and we also got to hear it from various characters who appeared on the show throughout the years. It was an emotional moment from The Walking Dead final. The phrase was not just about those who lived versus those who were dead, it included the dead as well. It more so referred to the love and connection that helped this group of people persevere throughout and against all challenges. Now, in this spin-off, it's obvious that it's Rick and Michonne who are the ones who live, but I also have a feeling that none of the other characters we've been seeing will be alive by the finale. Look at Okafor and Nat, both important characters that helped Rick and Michonne. They both died like it was nothing. Michonne holding Danger's lighter and looking over the CRM base reminded me of the kill or get killed attitude. There's no way Michonne and Rick will get out of there before avenging Nat's death. Once Rick also finds out about RJ, he will be full of revenge feelings too. I can see these two taking out everyone. How do you think the show will end? Jadis's shenanigans I mean, I truly don't know the consensus on this character, but I truly hate her. I'm not sure if it's because of the haircut or knowing about her past, there's just something about her that I don't like. When she threatened Rick not to run away with Michonne, I wondered, hmm. Why didn't she threaten Rick before, like after he tried to escape all those times? The only plausible explanation I can think of is Jadis did not really think Rick would be able to escape on his own, but with Michonne there, Jadis knows that they are a deadly team. They could actually manage to get out, that's why she's warning him. But still, I find it odd that Rick tried to escape all those times, knowing that Jadis knew all these things about him and Alexandria. Didn't he worry that if he escaped, Jadis would let CRM know about his family? Why didn't he think of the repercussions? How would you explain that? I'm curious to find out. CRM's shenanigans Everyone's up to something here on this show. Why would CRM just drop gas bombs on civilians who were just minding their business? It tells us a few things about this military group. Scott Gimple, the showrunner, talked about this during Inside the Episode. He said that Michonne's people were getting too close to the city and that's why CRM decided to eliminate them. They didn't want anyone to find out about the city. Another thing that this scene proved, how inhumane CRM is. In the normal world, chemical weapons are banned since their usage is a crime against humanity. But CRM randomly gassing people with chlorine gas shows how there's no one to hold them accountable. They answer to no one and that's really scary if you think about it. Finally, it makes you think about how they did the same thing to Omaha as we learned Omaha had fallen in the previous episode. Rick figured it was CRM who took the city out. I figured it was to prevent a famine. In another Walking Dead sequel, The World Beyond, it is explained that CRM destroys Omaha because the people there couldn't produce enough on their own and would be reliant on CRM's help. 
so they took out a potential threat before it actually became one, even if it meant gassing or bombing thousands of innocent people. We saw the strength and the harsh rules of CRM in the previous episode as well, but seeing what happened in this episode too makes you think how the hell Rick and Michonne are going to get out of this mess without losing one another. This is all I have to say for episode 2, I'm looking forward to the next one, Sunday cannot come quickly enough. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so as not to miss my videos, see you soon!